Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, back on the back on the harder puzzles today in a way. I think this, I don't know, this one's clearly going to take a bit longer because there's a bit more going on. Um, and it's perhaps a tribute to, it's a good puzzle to do today because it is ongoing as I record this. The World Puzzle Championship is underway in Krakow following the um, World Sudoku Championship. So we're still celebrating Crack of the Cryptic, and uh, there is a big lead for Ken Endo at the moment, who did very well in the Sudoku competition, but is an even more specialist in puzzles. Um, he's some way clear of Thomas Luo, from what I can see on the website, and even he's quite a long way clear of uh, Kristen Koenig in third. So there is clearly some unbelievable puzzling going on at the top of that. Um, I also noticed Taro Aramatsu, who uh, came second in the over 50s uh, in the Sudoku, is comfortably leading this category in the World Puzzles. And the top two British competitors are in 23rd and 27th. Good luck, James and Neil. But uh, this puzzle is a bit light. It's a sort of tribute because it's going to use the pentominoes. And do hang around for the rule set if you're thinking of having a go at solving this and my explanation of it. If you haven't seen the pentominoes before and you don't know their letters, um, it will really help you with solving it. Also, the concept of uh, cells seeing other cells might be useful. So anyway, we will look at the rules in a moment. I do want to mention clearly the Kickstarter, which uh, is going great guns. Thank you so much if you've pledged to support our Cracking the Cryptic Greatest Hits, Volume 2. Uh, we are really looking forward to bringing you that. We have passed the stretch goal now, I think, for um, community chosen puzzles. So there will be some of those in it, and that's really good news. Uh, what else have we got going on? We've just closed the door on the monthly championship, Duality Skunk Works Pack, or the Duality Pack by the Skunk Works Collective, which has been so popular. The comments have been fantastic. The number of entries who have got through all the 14 puzzles, we're blown away. Hundreds and hundreds of people. As you will know, Simon is still only some way through reading out the correct entries. He only does a few a day, because otherwise it would take over the whole video. Um, um, unbelievable. I predicted to him somewhere between 50 and 100 people would get through the whole lot. And he's going to have to go up to nearly 500. And I'm it's astonishing. Very well done if you're on our Patreon and you've done that. E Look, even if you got through the first four puzzles and sent that, we've had over a thousand correct entries to that. I, it's incredible. You guys are amazing. Um, Three dollar and above a month Patreons will get some solution videos on those puzzles as well, which have been kindly prepared by the constructors, I think, mainly. So... They'll be coming out uh, at some point in the next few days. And until the 31st of the month, we have this new classic explain the solution path competition for the jovial and shy puzzle. Those brilliant constructors have created a classic that almost defies explanation. And uh, we are getting some entries in, I think, now as to how you can explain that, which uh, will... The best will earn a prize of some sort yet to be decided. Now, oh, that's lots going on, but all very worthwhile. You can, of course, buy our apps as well if you follow the link to the apps under the video, um, including the 500k app. Gosh, I don't know when we're going to stream. I suspect it'll be some point early next week now. Anyway, let us have a look at the rules of Blobs's puzzles. Blobs is one of the constructors who appears in the 500k free app with a really good puzzle um, that is, it's got a couple of extra regions in it and some German whispers. But this time, Blobs is looking at Pentomino sight lines. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply, hurrah. Digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. Not all such dots are shown. In fact, on this grid, there is no dot shown. So something has gone wrong with the grid. Okay, I'm going to be back in a second with the correct grid. And there we go. A dot mysteriously appears. <laughs> There's one dot. Um, 
digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. Not all such dots are shown. So there's two consecutive digits on those cells. Don't know how that happened, but anyway, let's... Good thing to spot it at this stage while reading the rules. Uh, there had to be... It couldn't have been one of those puzzles where the rule is there but no dots are given because there was no negative constraint. Anyway, the indicated white cell region. So all the white cells are 60 cells. So the indicated 60 cell white region contains one each of the 12 standard pentominoes. Now, do you know the 12 standard pentominoes? If you don't, I am going to call up a set of them. Look at that. As if by magic. There are the 12 standard dominoes, and their letters are going to be important in the rest of this rule set as we scroll down it. So, each pentomino contains exactly one given digit. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. We have 12 given digits in the puzzle. One of them is in each of the pentominoes. That digit indicates the number of cells of the pentomino that are seen orthogonally from that position, including itself. So this one, that could be the shape of a pentomino, and that five sees all the cells of the pentomino, either horizontally or vertically, in the sense that it, it looks directly into those cells from where it is. Uh, the three, I suppose, might be, no, that's wrong, might be that shape. And then this three would be seeing those three cells of that pentomino only. So the digit indicates the number of the cells that are seen, including itself. Once placed, each pentomino behaves like a five-cell killer cage. Digits do not repeat and must sum to the value listed below using the pentomino... Oh, bother, I've just done those examples under, <laughs> under the, uh, the... Sorry, let me do them down here. So that five sees all of those five cells. And this three might apply if its shape was like that. Then it sees those three vertical cells. Sorry, if I did them under the picture of the pentominoes. Now, we get the killer cage totals. Uh, digits don't repeat in the cages and must sum to the values listed below. And you can see that the pentominoes are labelled with letters and they're even oriented in this diagram so you can see why those letters apply. Um, and it's worth learning the pentomino shapes because they crop up in quite a few puzzles and uh, they're very useful to know. And I mean, they're not hard to learn given the shapes. So um, I will be referring to them during the video, I presume, by their letter number. So that's what's going on in the puzzle. Uh, let me get rid of, there we go, of the um, picture of the pentominoes, which I have memorized, of course. And uh, I'm sure you have too. But we are going to try and solve the puzzle. No idea how it's going to go. This is going to be a longer video than a gas video. That's what I'm guessing. And uh, But I'm really fascinated to give it a go. So thank you, Blobs, for sending it in. We're going to try it now. Let's get cracking. You can of course do it on the link under the video. Okay, nothing is obvious to me, even from doing those examples on various pentominoes. But, oh, I know what I can do. All of the numbers are in different pentominoes, so I could colour them all. Why not? Red, uh, blue, and yellow. Obviously I'm going to have to use those six colours twice each, so I'm going to make that one purple. I'm going to colour them so I hope they won't run into each other. Let's make that green. We'll stick red over here, yellow down here, this blue there, and orange there. I, you know, I may have to change the colours if that four reaches across and touches this five somehow, but anyway. Those must be the 12, sh those must be one digit each in the 12 shapes because that's the, what the rules mean now. The four, okay, this four, which is sandwiched in between the three and the five, that sees four of the cells. So it must see that cell. You can't, see it, it, all the cells it sees, this four, including itself, must be in column three. And the highest it can go is there, so it must go down to here. Um, 
could be those four though. So, so this three don't know. What do we know about that? It could get out round this corner and then the five. Oh no, the five sees all of the cells of five. Oh right, this five number is quite important here. So the maximum number of cells it can see on the vertical are four, so it must see that cell. The maximum number of cells it can see in the horizontal are four, so it sees another one in the vertical at least. But now, ah, oh, this has bounded the four. That's the point. The four now needs to see all its four be those, to be those four. It, there's no other cell it could see. So this four has a long strut. It is either an L pentomino with its fifth digit in one of those places or a white pentomino. Now that's bounded in this three. Ah, now there are two cells that the three does not C in its pentomino. And there are only two cells within this region that it can live in that that three can't see. So those must be green. They must be part of the three pentomino. Now, it obviously must include this cell, otherwise that gets cut off. And then it's going to be a P, but it's either going to be a P with its bottom down here that doesn't make sense because these two cells will be cut off. One of them could become purple, but the other couldn't. So that's green. This cell to avoid being cut off is purple. And we have placed our P and our L. This cell has to be red. It's in this five shape. Now, the five C's all... Ah, the five can't be an L, so it doesn't go out there because we've had our L. And we need to get one of each shape in. So the five doesn't go to there, so we need a a fourth red cell that we can put there and it's either going to be a T or a Y like that. Now what next? That's some quite good operations but they've been a bit confined to the northwest. Where can we branch out? This five is going to see all of its region cells. Oh, so's this one. I mean, oh, this one. <laughs> okay, this is the next one. This five sees all of its region cells. The only five white cells or, or green that it can see are there. So it's a V. This cell becomes red. So this is really interesting. We've we've now established four of the shapes. What I find interesting about that is that L, P, V, and Y are four of the easiest shapes to manipulate. So now they're gone. I mean, we haven't touched an X anywhere. Does X have to be a five? Ah, now I'll tell you something interesting about X. I thought it did for a second. If X has its given digit in the middle, that digit is a five. If it doesn't, that digit is a three, whichever arm it's on. And, okay, this can't be an X5. This is, this is worth checking out. This can't be an X5 because it would include a grey cell. This one can't be an X5. This one could be. This can't be an X3 because where would its centre be? Wherever its centre would be, it would either crash out of the grid or into other coloured cells. And this can't be on the arm of a 3 either. Oh, that's really weird. That's that's absolutely the right question at this point, was where does X go? Maybe it, you could have done this earlier. I don't know. I suppose, no, that could have been an X originally. Anyway, this must be the X, this 5, and it sees all its cells. So there they are. We've done the X. Right, now, that's a really good deduction. We get this W shape immediately for yellow, which confirms it sees the 3. That cell has to be orange. This sees all its cells. And I, oh, I was going to say, this proves that one, the, the I, sorry, I must be here, but it doesn't because I could be five there. Wherever the I is, it's going to have a five in because they're, 
number must see all its cells. So we've used X and W as well as L, P, Y and V. I haven't considered a U anywhere. Oh, it's really interesting, this puzzle of tiling the shapes. Now, maybe, maybe it is worth thinking about the eye. I mean, I rather feel it's going to be sitting there. If that was an eye, what happens? Ah, yes, yeah, something does happen. If that's an eye, this five's not allowed to be an eye. If that's an eye, this five can't be an eye. These can't be, yeah, okay. Let me just draw this in to show you what I'm seeing. If that five was part of an eye, we get an orange eye down there now. This cell can't be part of the 5 because the 5 digit has to see all of the cells in its shape. And that means these are obviously the only cells it can see. So if that's part of it, it would either be an I, or, which it can't be because we've just posited an I, or a Y, which it can't be because we've done the Y over there. So that couldn't be part of the 5. So it would have to be part of the 3. Now, what shape could you possibly make that that three can see? Oh, bother, you can. No, you can't. You can't. This three would see any further cells in its shape. And therefore, it would see four of them. Wherever you draw the shape to make up a pentomino from here, that three would, would be wrong. So because it would see any of those cells that go in the shape and therefore it would have to be a four, that's why. So this is not the eye. The eye must be sitting down here, as I did suspect until I suddenly thought that was possible. Um, now, what next? What have we got left to do? We've got... Um, I'm just going to look at the shapes. Right, we've got... U, F, N, T, and Z. Still to go. U, F, N, T, and Z. Well, well yeah, what's this 5 going to be? It could be T, couldn't it? it? 5 could never be in a U or an F. Oh, we've had V, so I don't know why I listed that. Did I list that? No, I didn't. U, F, N. N can never have a 5 in. Z can never have a 5 in. So this must be a T. Oh, weird. Okay, that's a T. This becomes purple. That becomes purple. What is purple going to be? It's not Z. It's not... It's not F. Oh, it could be F. Yes, that would see the right number of cells. It could be U. It could be me. Um, it can't be N, because we can't make an N from there. And we've only got U, F, N and Z left. This can't be... Oh, it could be Z. That would see 4. But that cell would be cut off, so it can't be that. So it's F or U, and it includes that cell and one of those two. That wasn't quite as helpful as I was hoping for. Now, what about this three then? U, F, N, and Z. So it can't be U, because that would see four. I don't think this can be in an F from here. No, it can't. F needs a sort of three by three box to live in. So does Z. This can't be Z. This must be part of an N. And now I am lost. How can I draw... Oh, I can draw an N in, including that. And it sees three. There we go. We're away. So this is Z. I felt like I was cutting this off. But that's Z and the four is right. This is now 
I still don't know whether it's U or F, but look at this shape. This is going to have to be U. The 4 is right. That's part of F, and there are the shapes. Oh, that's a lovely bit of tiling. Anyway, um, nice. Nice start to the puzzle, but we're nowhere near finished. We've got to figure out the killers, the killer aspect now. So, there was a 15 in this list. U equals 15. That's this baby here. 1, 2, 3, and 5 have to go in with 4 because the only way to make 15 in 5 different digits is to use 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, that is... Is that the only giveaway cage? There's no 35s, 34s, or 16s. T is a 17. Ah, and T has a 5 in. So T is going to have to be 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. Because if you did go through the possibilities, you would work out that the other possibility to make 15 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. But we know there's a 5 in the cage. So those can't be 3. There is a 3 in one of those two cells. Um, any other wonderful cage totals to work on? P equals 33, and P has got a 3 in, yes. So that's 9, 8, 7, 6 to go with the 3. So what about the next highest is Z, 31. That means those add up to 27. Oh, look, I can see none of those can have a 5 in just because of that 5. So I think there is only going to be one way to do this now. We're looking for a total on Z of 31. Minus 4 is 27. That, not using 4 or 5, is, I think it's going to be 9873. <clears throat> is that right? Yeah, you're going to have to have one number from below 4 and 5 because you can't only have numbers above it. And the only way to do that is 3, 7, 8, 9. Well, okay, the 3 is in one of those two cells. The others are 7, 8, or 9. Both those positions for 3 see that cell, so we know where the 3 goes in the T. There's our first number in the grid after 14 minutes of solving. Good. Um, we've got a 1, 2, 6, triple. That is 3, 7, 8. Well, it's not 3. It's 7, 8, or 9 as well in the box. We've got 3 in one of those two. 3 in one of those two. Can't really do anything else with that. Okay, well now, were there other useful totals? 30 in the F. Ah. Oh, I was going to say it can't have a 3 or a 5 in. Then I would know what it was. But actually, oh, actually, that can't be a 5. One of these two is a 5, and I don't know which one. If that's a 5, that's 1, 2, that's a 3. But if that's a 5, is there a way to make up 30? You'd have 9. Those would be 21, not including a 5. I think they'd have to be 6, 7, 8, but that works perfectly well. So, no, that F total was a red herring. Let's look at the low totals again. N equals 17. I have not tried to use that. Oh, there were two 17s. I didn't notice. <clears throat> 17 can be 1, 2, 3. Ah, oh, this can't have a 4 in it, I can see now. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, exactly the same as the population of the T. So the 5 goes here. 1, 2, and 6 go in those cells. I'm not ashamed to pencil mark, because I think this is actually going to be very helpful at some point. <clears throat> Got a lot of 1, 2, 6 cells going on. Oh, we're so close to making some decision on this cage. But it could still have that 5 in and 8, 7, 6. Then that would be a 9. Otherwise, this is 2, 4, 7, 8, 9. I don't know. OK. Oh, look, that 5, that's fixed lots of things. That's what it's done. That's a 1, 2 pair. That's a 3. That's a 5. OK. Now we cannot have a 5 in this cage. And now it is... 
Well, yeah, you can't put 9876 in it or it would add up to 34. So you have to have one number that's lower than the three forbidden digits, 3, 4, and 5. There, well, 4 is not forbidden, 4 is in it, but one number lower means it's 2789 now. I was wondering if I could say that that's the 789 triple because 2 must be there, but I don't know that. In fact, if 2 was there in the end cage, in the yellow cage, that wouldn't be 2 and 2 would be here. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. But we know it's population at least. That's something. Now, what about I? 26. Useless number. What about Y? 23. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to do Sudoku on these populations. Ah, oh, no. Maybe I could use the secret up here. X adds up to 25, plus 3 is 28. These three cells add up to 17. Oh, look, where 3 goes in column 6, right there, because it can't be in this case. No, it doesn't. I'm talking absolute tripe. It, <laughs> column 6, it goes there. It doesn't go there, because that would be in the same cage as a 3 and the same box as a 3. I don't know why... The mad part of me thought it could go there for a moment. The Dr. Jekyll part of Mark Goodliffe. Right. No, the Mr. Hyde part, obviously. Now, threes in one of those cells. Just marking the threes around the grid. We've also got a lot of fives. There's going to be a, a five in one of those two. And a f ah, a five in column one. And that's going to sort out threes. Five there. That makes that a three. It makes this a five. It stops that being five got all the fives in the grid and we're down to an x-wing on threes in row eight and nine good now what else ah this cell can't be a five and yet the white dot says it has to touch a six seven eight or nine so it must be a six seven eight or nine it must be the same digit as is in that cell but perhaps Yes, look, look at this naked single. That's beautiful. It sees five, six, seven, eight, nine in its column. In its row, it sees three and one, two, and it is a four. And that one, two pair has just notified me that that's a six. I take six out of those cells. I take two out of those and put it up here. I get a six here. We take six out of those cells and put it in here. I can fix the two, one pair in orange. That is not a six. This is not a six. <clears throat> One of those two is six. Might well be that one, but I'm not sure. Can it be that? Yes, it can. Okay. Five, one, two, four, three. One of these two is six by looking at sixes and Sudoku. Um, these two are from seven, eight, and nine. Can I have to look at these cage totals after I've done a bit of this work? Ah, now, up here, this was going to add up to 25, plus 3 and 2 is now 30. These two add up to 15, and they can't have a 6 in. Look at that, because of the position of these 6s. So they must be a 7-8 pair. Which is fun to find out, but only goes so far. Actually, these cells are from 7-8-9 in that column. We've got a 789 triple in this column, so we need to fit 1, 2, and 4 into it. Um, 5 and 3 and 4. I could, should really stop worrying. Oh, look, 4 can be placed up here. can't be there from the pencil marking. It can't be there because we've already got a 4 in that shape. So it's there. That gives me a 4 here. Might be able to finish off 4s. One of those two is now a four. Those don't have a four. They're a one-two pair. And one of these two is a four. That's now a three-four pair. So that X-wing, I uh, can't actually resolve it yet, but we got close. Now, what's going on up here? We've got a one-six pair left over. These are a four and something from seven, eight, or nine. So I'm going to have to look in a moment at, oh look, five, one, two, three, four. So these are all high digits. It's definitely a six in one of those. 
What is this W shape meant to add up to? 26. Oh, well, if you took the minimum there, that's 21, plus 3 is 24. The maximum this cell can be is 2. And these are either 6, 7, 8, or 6, 7, 9. So they do have a 6 in. Um, I've got a 1, 2 pair there. So these are also high. Actually, these are 2 and don't include a 6. Oh, come on. Okay, so what shape have I not really considered the total of? Basically, it's this I, V, Y, and L. Which one will be better? Let's try I first of all. I adds up to 26, which doesn't feel like a great total. It's got two low digits in. If this was low, the maximum the low digits could add up to is 9, plus 5 there is 14. We would never get to 26. So this is not low, this is high, this is 7, 8 or 9. Therefore we can place 4 in this X wing. Therefore we can fix this 4, 3 pair and therefore we can place 3 in box 7. And that's all the 3, 4, 5's done in the puzzle now. Now this 26 cage has a 4 and a 5 in it, 9. So these add up to 17. And one of them is very low, it's either 2 with a 15 pair or one with a 16 pair. If it was one and seven, nine, that would be eight. And we'd be left with two, six over here. Now yeah, that's possible, okay. I may not be able to do any more there. Bit odd I never finished that one off. Oh, this one is done. Look, one and six plus five and four, sorry if you spotted this ages ago. Seven plus nine is 16 and we need 25, that is a nine which actually was obvious from the 7-8 pair. Didn't need to do the adding up. Um, that's not a 9. Doesn't really fix this box. Doesn't it mean one of these is a 9? I don't think it does necessarily yet. Could still be that that was a 9. Okay. Um, now, why? What does Y add up to? I barely looked at that. 23. If that was a 6, we'd be up to at least 18 there. The most these could be is 5. That would restrict them to being a 2 and a 1. If they were a 2 and a 1, we've got 8, and these would add up to 15. That is possible, annoyingly. Oh, hang on, I've got a 7, 8, 9 triple there. This is a 1, 2 pair. Does that do anything? Don't think so. This is... Six, seven, eight, or nine. It is high. Um, oh, I've just noticed that is going to be the same digit as that, which is going to be one of those two. I don't think I can use that. That's going to be the same digit as that. There might be some equivalences like this around. I don't quite know how to make progress. So we've done P. Let's have a look at L. What does L add up to? 24. 24. So it doesn't have 3 or 5 in it. If it had the other one out of 1 and 2, wouldn't have to be there, but if it had the other one out of 1 and 2, it would have to be 1, 2, 4, 8, 9. That's possible. If it didn't have the other one out of 1 and 2, then these three digits would be at least 6, 7, 8, which adds up to 21. That's completely impossible, because L is only meant to add up to 24. So it does have the other... It is 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. The 9 goes there. No, it's not 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. It's 1, 2, 4, 8, 9. But, but, but that is right. 7 and 17, yes. So these two cells contain 1, 2 and... Well, those three contain one, two, and eight. One of these is an eight, and there's no eight there, and there's no eight here. Um, oh, there's no nine here. That's a six, seven pair. This is a nine, eight pair. Right, given the white dot, which really comes into its own now, that has to be seven, 
which fixes the 8-9 pair. This is where 6 goes. Now in the red, which add the Y adds up to 23, 11 there, 12 in these cells. This can't be high, so it must be the other one out of 1, 2. And that's a 9. Lovely. That's lovely. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so 1, 2 pair there looking at that cell, which is an 8. Um, this is 7 or 8 by just looking at the column. 15, 20, 24. V adds up to 25. So that's going to do all our 1, 2s, I think. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. Well, it does them that far doesn't get over to these but that's lovely um maybe it does yes i've got a six seven pair so this is a one that's a six seven and eight up here are looking at that cell i hadn't seen that that's an eight that's a seven in the same cage now that's a six and we've got to be able to work out what this is we've got 24 in the w so far that's a two and that's going to fix our one twos over here what a puzzle um, that those aren't eight. These two aren't nine, which is much more important because it means that is nine. Seven in the center. Those don't have a seven in, so seven in the blue there. That's an eight. That does nine and eight. This this is an eight, so that's a nine. We can do seven eight here. Got six and eight over on the right. Seven and nine to go in the box like that. We can do eight and seven. Seven and one up there. That's a one. Six and seven. And two cells left in the grey. Two and six. And that is the solution to Pentomino sightlines. What a beautiful puzzle. I mean, I like playing around with Pentominoes. That is the part of the World Puzzle Championships that I would enjoy. Stuff like with shapes and things. It's where... It's where you get a big 10 by 10 grid and some complicated rule about black and white cells not being allowed in certain formations. I don't know. I find I find puzzles much more of a struggle than Sudoku. And I don't know why that is. But again, I wish great good luck to all the competitors in it. Um, I'm sure Ken Endo will continue doing well today. And uh, yeah, good luck to everybody out there in Krakow. And uh, hope to see you soon. On Crack Off the Cryptic. Uh, bye for now.